This week Astana unveiled a landmark in this new capital, the world's largest tent. Another feat of architecture coinciding with the president's 70th birthday. When Italian tenor Andrea Bocelli sings for one night in front of nine heads of state from Russia to the United Arab Emirates, it's got to be a special occasion. More than just the opening of Central Asia's largest entertainment centre, Khan Shatir, the celebration was a coming-of-age party for Astana. In 1998, the capital was moved a thousand kilometres north from the larger southern city of Almaty. This was the idea of my president, President Nazarbayev, to build up a new capital as a symbol of independence of our country, as a symbol of the future growth. Twelve years have passed. The new capital has trebled in size. More than $12 billion has been spent on transforming the skyline of this remote city on the Eurasian steppes into the new seat of government, and the moves paid off. Almaty was more like a village, and it didn't suit Nazarbayev's vision for Kazakhstan's future. It's been a success story, and it hasn't crumbled in the face of a global financial crisis as was, was a, big, as a big worry. That, that, that was a real test for Kazakhstan, and it came through it so far. I think that we can count the new capital as a collection of the landmark buildings and the masterpiece of architecture. All those buildings makes the Astana, I mean, is an open museum of architectural masterpieces. The $400 million Khan Shatir, designed by Britain's Foster and Partners, is testament to this. After three years in the making, it completes the capital's main axis. It's 150 metres tall. There's a, there's a tripod structure, steel structure, which supports the cable net. There's over 100,000 square metres of accommodation within the building, which is a combination of, of retail, cinemas, restaurants, exhibition spaces. This latest addition to Astana's futuristic architecture is one of the most ambitious engineering projects in the world and behind the scenes, Turkish contractors. For all of us, you know, as a construction company, for the engineers, for the architects, interior designers, for landscape designers, it was a, a big experience, you know, which is not done before. The most dramatic part of this construction was to erect up the tripod. You know, the total weight of that tripod is 2,500 tons. The dome is held up by 380 steel cables, each tightened individually by hand. They're covered in a lightweight membrane that lets the light in but retains the heat. We got like 500 climbers here to pull the cables to, to there and, you know, you know, it's massive work so we needed them. You know, we brought like from France, also Germany and Turkey also. Kanchitir means giant tent in Kazakh, and it will be the world's largest. Underneath this dome, in an area larger than 10 football stadiums, will be an indoor city. Here they're trying to recreate summer, so that when temperatures dip below minus 30 degrees Celsius in winter, people will still be able to enjoy themselves. It even houses an indoor beach with heated sand from the Maldives. Not bad for the world's second coldest capital. I think they're to try and deal with the extremes of temperature, the incredible heat, the incredible uh, cold winters, that is a challenge. They managed to find a way to use their, their experience, their technologies from Turkey, but also using specialists from, from Bureau Hapold from London and uh, specialist subcontractors from Germany to pull it all together to basically to finish a remarkable building in a place which is actually incredibly difficult to work in, a very extreme climate and to combine all those challenges together and to be able to deliver and build an extraordinary building is an amazing achievement. One that the Kazakhs hope will put their capital on the world stage.